So after a long hiatus, we return back to Squoam following his wintry holiday adventure. In today's episode, called Good Lash, uh, we pick up where we left off, traveling on our way to Abris, and stumble upon an adventure in the middle of nowhere. We hope you enjoy. All right. Prepare to have your spirit broken. Here we go. I'm prepared. Right. So do you remember what happened in the last Squone episode that we did forever I ago? I killed the Krampus. You killed Krampus, yeah. That was, <laughs> that was... That was the adventure. Yep. Killed Krampus and saved Christmas. And didn't, uh... Didn't we turn into candy canes or something? Or didn't the others? Or, or snowmen or something? We turned into snowmen. Oh, yeah. For a little while. Yeah. That was a thing. Scone didn't, though. It was... No, Scone did. didn't, but... But yeah, Sarah did. And, um... Uh... And Sangrimmer turned into a teddy bear version of himself. Nice. <laughs> at one point. And, uh, Orin was dressed like an elf. For a little while. Because that was a nonsense adventure. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> But fun, yeah. I guess it was fun. Chris, Christmas time. Okay. Yeah. So, since leaving Krampus Town, wasn't it that place? Uh, you, I knew you were gonna ask me, and I knew I was gonna forget because I don't have yeah. those notes in front of me. That's okay. It's Christmas Town. Okay. Leaving Christmas Town, yeah. and. Uh, Getting back to the main road to Abris, which is where you've been heading. Yep. Up in yes. the mountains. Mm-hmm. Heading further into the mountains, uh, along the main road, as the forest kind of gets thicker, things get closer together. Um, there's not as much traffic the further up you get, for, for obvious reasons. Every now and again you see military caravans go by, or logging um, carts, but not too much going on up here. It does start to get noticeably colder after a couple of days, so you all travel onward. Uh, Orin does not have any warm clothing, and neither does Sarah. Well, we can hunt something. Can hunt Thank something? You. Have you ever hunted animals, Steingrimmer, for your clothing and such? You look like a guy who could make something out of leather. Uh, Steingrimmer isn't quite... I mean, he's never really left his own woods, so... And he doesn't really worry about winter, because, you know... Because... Yeah. Um... Well, <laughs> um, we could probably try to hunt something. Let's see, how would we go about this? Give me one second. Okay. You want me to pause the recording? Yes, please. Okay. I have names for all the uh, all the goblins too. All the gnomes. Yeah. <laughs> You're the worst name. Yeah. <laughs> I amuse myself way too much. Uh, the name uh, of the town was Krakenbush. Oh yeah, that's right. It had a cool name. Yeah. And you stayed at the Mooselick Inn. Mooselick Inn. Moose. Hmm. Okay. Back to the skin. I just spell crack English. I can hear myself. Uh -huh. that Is it me? Um. Let me turn it down. I 
of that now. Button. Button. Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh. Hmm. I have no idea what could be causing that. On my end. On my end. Hmm. It wasn't happening before. Yeah. I didn't change any settings or anything. Bye bye. Just you and me, Gucci. Um, never mind, he's back. Hello? Okay, Hi. It that was weird. That's weird. Yeah. Wait, did it stop? Yes, it stopped. Okay. Okay. I wrote down all the names of your uh, gnomes. Did you? Yeah, let's let's mm -hmm. see if I've got them right. Okay, uh, right. Harkin, Mintfire, Kethel, Sugar Fizz, Gillick, Luck Drop, Fimka, Tinkerbang. Yep. <laughs> yep. That was them. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to do another stupid Christmas one for you. <laughs> if you want. Sure. No, you know, it's not enthusiastic enough, so you're yeah, gonna yeah, okay, get one. What's that? I don't know, I wasn't getting much enthusiasm, so. That, that was maximum enthusiasm. Okay. Anyway. Alright, alright, alright. <clears throat> We're playing D&D, &D, Derek. Okay, so, um. Sticking around. We have nothing that he could wear? Orin or Sarah? Orin. What, Sarah needs clothes too? Well, Sarah doesn't, ha I mean, he's not complaining, but he doesn't technically have any cold weather gear. Well, he, technically, he Scorn doesn't either. Technically, yeah. Scorn doesn't either. And he's all mind over matter. He wouldn't. Complain. He's got that sweet jacket, though. He does have the sweet jacket. And he could stick his hands into the sleeves, which he does. Um, well, no one's going to wear his jacket. That's, like, not on the table. Because uh, he doesn't care about material things other than this jacket <laughs> that no one may touch. <laughs> do, does, do either, does anyone have any hunting traps or any hunting knowledge? I'll throw that out to the group. Or, this is not a group of hunters. Or knowledge of how to skin an animal. Like, I've lived in the wild. I'm an outlander, but I know how to, like, skin an animal and dry its skin and and make a fur wrapping of some kind. Uh, what's your survival skill? Awesome. I'm proficient. Good, though. Plus six. Yeah. Oh, see? We'll roll your survival skill. Okay, is this for trapping the animal or um, skinning it? Or just, just my knowledge I, in general of the process. I think just your knowledge in general of the process. Like, do you understand what's all involved, what you need, and all that? Sort of. I know. So you get the general idea. All right. So um, I guess we'll make camp somewhere along the side of the road. And I will try to go out and lay some traps, um, some sort of makeshift traps involving pits. I'll bring Sarah along to dig the pits. Do we have a shovel? Oh, great. <laughs> no. Do you have a shovel? I don't know. Maybe. Let's see what's in my pack. Um, Tinderbox, water skin, rations, dried fish, torch. Hunting trap. I do have a hunting trap. Well, there you go. I'll just do that. I'll fuck the pit. I'll use my hunting trap. Okay. And we'll, uh, sort of, I'll try to find, like, a, a deer trail or something like that. And, uh, set it on the deer, tr deer trail. Okay. And then just wait. 
Yep, and then we'll just sort of make camp for like a day or two. So, uh, we catch something. Alright. I think I'm so pretty hang good at foraging out. too. Or is it Are you? I don't know. No, I'm, well, That's kind of. Survival. Let's see. Wanderer. Yes, in addition, you can find food and fresh water for yourself and up to five other, five other people each day. Provided that the land mm -hmm. offers berries, small game, water, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Or we're not going to starve. No. No, you haven't really been in danger of running out of food between your ability to forage and Steingrimmer's ability to identify things you can eat. You're not really in any danger of that. Okay. So yeah, do I roll so a survival for my trap? Yeah, roll a survival for your trap success here. See how long. Well, that's not bad. That takes you a day or two. But you do manage to trap a deer. Hooray. Hooray. What are you going to do with it? You're uh, gonna... is, I'll call Sarah over. Yeah, all I have is this food to bash its head in. Would you mind uh, lopping its head off? <laughs> the will lop its head off. I'll do a small sort of um, ritual sort of prayer thing that I make up on the spot to honor the deer and its sacrifice before we lop its head off. Roll performance check. <laughs> See how good your improv skills are. Yay! Hey! Sarah's <laughs> impressed by my spirituality. Yes, my deep and abiding feels spirituality. feels a little better. Yes, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> you say your little prayer. Yeah. Now you got some meat, you got some hide. Alright, well I'll try to um, get the meat out of there and hang this like get the meat off the skin or and hang up the skin to dry or whatever whatever it seems like an outdoorsman would do in a situation with a dead deer mm -hmm. when he wants to turn it into mm -hmm. clothes. Does okay. anyone know how to smoke meat? Because I imagine it'll take a while for this thing to dry. Well yeah. yeah. I mean Sangrimer can do that. All right. so he kind of takes over the process. He hangs up the skin and, and smokes the meat for you. And so you're there for another few days. Uh, the road is fairly quiet, so you're not really disturbed. Ask uh, and mm -hmm. while, while we're camped there, I'll try to get a feel for how Oren feels about possibly becoming, like, enrolling in... Hogwarts or whatever the magical equivalent to neighbors is. Like whether he'd be open to, you know, getting some more magical training and maybe uh, going to magic school. Do they have those neighbors? Oh, they must have. Where would they learn magic? I don't know. I don't know about neighbors. Well, it stands to reason. In my opinion. From your vast knowledge <laughs> of wizards and their doings. Yes. Well, he's un unsure about the idea. Well, the alternative is sort of um, hanging out with us indefinitely while we trek through the wilds and such. And you've shown something of a distaste for that, so I thought I'd offer an alternative. Yeah, that would be an idea. Isn't it expensive to be a mage, though? Oh no, I, sh I saved uh, Amaja's uh, life. She owes me a favor. He just kind of looks at you funny. I caught an arrow out like, of the air. Like, sure you did. Just as it was about... Sir, you were there. I caught an arrow out of the air, right? Just as it was about to hit him. A black arrow. And Sarah kind of... He begrudgingly nods and he did. Yeah. I, mean, I was there. He's still sort of come to some kind of ailment, but 
that wasn't I did I did my part. I mean I catch arrows. I don't I'm not a doctor. No one can fault me for that. <laughs> no origins. He's nodding too now. And Sarah's in the background making noises. In the Brutius campsite. The site of the Paragrounds. <laughs> So when your deer has finally been smoked and your skin has been dried, uh, Sangrimer can stitch together something. It's, I mean, it's only one deer hide, so it'll only work for Orin. And it's not much. Well, while he's smoking and skinning and everything, I'll set another trap to see if we can get something for, for Sarah. Alright, go ahead and roll. Aha! Ah! So you catch an even larger deer now. The old mule deer. You see, repeat the process over again. I do the same It's still not much more. Last time. Okay, the I'll make the performance one. check. Yes, yeah, since you don't have to make it up on the spot, you won't have to roll. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so, yeah, by the end of, you know, this near week. That you spent in camp <laughs> on the side of the road. <laughs> uh, Sangrimmer has managed to put together, uh, at the very least, uh, a little cloak for Orin and kind of a cape for um, Sarah. It's a little warmer than the one he has. Well, yeah, it's not much, but it'll work. Another thing I'll do to pass the time while we're there is I'll try to uh, teach Orin Elvish. Make him okay. more refined and educated. So maybe he'll be more appealing as a wizard's apprentice once we get there. Okay. Roll intelligence. Oh. My intelligence is alright. Well, it's not great, but. Oops. Okay. And he rolled a four on his. So uh, yeah. between the two of you, you're just kind of... <laughs> it's the blind leading, <laughs> leading the blind. <laughs> okay, once that proves to be a dead end, I'll teach him how to shoot a bow. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little easier to do. <laughs> so you spend some time trying to teach Orange some survival skills. He's not super good at it he's kind of clumsy this is definitely not his milieu but he tries like he actually he tries since we're going to be here for a week i'll get the others involved too i'll like every evening we'll have little root lord lectures from steingrimmer like little woodsman type seminars we can fill our heads with you know the knowledge of the forest <laughs> okay. and sarah can you mm -hmm. know teach him how to wrestle and shit like that and maybe work up to, to some, wrestle? some sword fighting if he's not a total... Like, it depends, I guess. We don't want to beat the kid up, is my thing. Oh. But, but train him in some well, kind of martial actually, ability. Yeah, I was say, Sarah's actually a fairly competent combat teacher. Okay. So that um, works. Because that was part of his old job description. He's dealing with new recruits. Not quite as young as this one, but not by much. Uh, so yeah, he, yeah. he he actually takes to it fairly easily. And of course, Steingrimmer is just patient beyond patient and has no problem explaining everything and anything that he knows at length. Repeating himself multiple times if he doesn't <laughs> think you're listening. I'll make sure he's just, listening droning on and on about various things and the people who live in the forest and what you can eat and what you can't eat and how you should properly store things and yeah that sort of thing okay so everyone has their ted talks throughout this week sangrimmer even shows everybody how he's making 
various pieces, such as they are. Okay. And so yes. after your week or so, you back off into the wilderness? Yep. Back to, back mm. onto the road and towards Abris. Back onto the road and towards Abris. Alright. So you continue traveling for a little while longer. Again, you're increasing in altitude the whole time. And the higher you go, the more the temperature drops. And, I mean, it's getting noticeably more mountainous. Uh, every now and again, you'll catch ruins that peek up from behind the trees. Big stone things. But then they disappear. Can we go uh, take a closer look at one of these ruins? Just to see who made them kind of deal? Sarah would caution against that. Why is that? Because they, prob they probably belong to the Paragon. Who are the Paragon? Who are? The Paragon are sort of a... Sort of a military force. Um, they, they serve the Old Kingdom of Manat before they were conquered, but part of the peace treaty was they were allowed to continue to patrol the mountains. So they have these... Uh, strongholds scattered throughout the mountains. They generally don't like visitors. Why don't they take better care of them? There aren't very many of them anymore. Oh. The force was pretty well decimated in the fight with Orem. So Orem took over Manat? But Manot? they're extremely proud. Hmm? Orem took over Manat then? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Orem has conquered the entire continent with the exception of Abris. Abris okay. is the only part of the continent that Orem does not control. Uh, and the forest. You actually met... Well, technically they control the forest, but they don't control it very well. Yeah, not where now, I'm from. Now, you have... Hmm? Not where I'm from. We were pre folk of the forest in my village. But anyway, go on. Uh, technically, Squoon has met the Queen of Minot. She's now one of the counselors on the Council of Barons. I think you told me that. What was her name again? Yep. Uh, let me make sure I'm getting it right. She's the one who talks funny. Funny how? Does she have what list? Uh, no, she she has a very distinctive accent compared to the other members of the council. She's got kind of that Welsh lilt. Oh, talks. okay. Cool. Everything kind of ends on an up note. Yeah. But yeah, she uh, she speaks very distinctly. And... Let's see, there she is, Nefer Arel. Oh. Now look at her picture. You can go on. Thank you. Now she's an, uh, an older lady, but yeah, she's the last of the line of rulers of Minot. So that's why it's really not a good idea to go poke a Paragon Stronghold. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so you continue on getting higher and colder until one morning, as you all set forth on a particularly chilly day, you hear shouts. Coming from ahead of you. Dun dun dun. Wham. <laughs> Wham. <laughs> uh, it sounds like at least one man and one woman uh, in a very panicked state. Uh, they're, they're definitely calling for help. Well, I've been down this road before. It's going to be another locker in and Ralphus situation. I draw my bow. As we approach. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I have a map for this. Oh, a visual aid. I do. I made. I made a map. Hmm. A visual aid. Yes. Are you having trouble hearing? I have to find it though. No, I'm talking on top of you. Well, I I, I turned you down because you said you were hearing yourself. So. I keep talking on top of you. Oh. 
We can turn me up a little bit. I'm gonna turn you up a little bit. The first visual aid. All right. I even put you on the board. Oh, you did. Look at you, so prepared. Ah. Yeah, I think I have. Uh... It's totally not because we've used this map before. I was gonna say this map looks familiar. I think I might have used it. Or, no, I have it in my yeah. arsenal, though, to be used. I haven't actually used it yet. Yeah, it's a pretty basic map. I think I've used it, like, eight times now. Have you? I told you I'm bad at maps, okay? <laughs> I'm bad. I'm, I'm a bad DM. No one no. should ever play with me. You're the best If you're DM. listening to this later, don't, don't ever play with me. Because my maps are trash. Alright. So, yes. You hear the sounds of screaming and yelling, and as you rush down the path, there are two large wagons, one of which has been overturned, uh, just off the side of the road. It looks like it, they might have swerved or something. The horses are no longer attached and are nowhere to be found. Um, the other wagon still has people by it. One man is in the back. It looks like he's been badly injured. His leg is all bloody. And there's a woman that is tending to him as best she can, but she is freaked right out. So it's, it's more of a panicked, I don't know what to do here kind of thing. Uh, but there are three other men that are very close to the wagon as well. Uh, one of whom is shouting for help, and the others uh, keep peeking around into the forest. Uh, they, they seem to be using the standing wagon as cover. So they're on the other side of the wagon from us, or they're on Yeah, they're on of... the road side of the wagon. Yeah, they're on the road side of the wagon. So over here, basically? Uh, you, uh, they would, they'd still be on the road. I don't have an upright wagon thingy, so they'd be about here. Oh, okay. Uh, the rem cause there's, yeah, the remaining wagon is here. They're on the road side of it, using it as cover. One dude's in the back with a woman tending to him, and then a second wagon has pulled off into the forest and flipped over with its horses now missing. Do we see any sign of what they're scared of? You don't see anything. You can roll a perception. See if anything tips you off. Mm. No. Nothing that really gives you an indication. All right, well, I guess we'll take cover behind their wagon. I'll motion for the others to follow me, and I'll duck mm -hmm. behind their wagon with them. What's going okay. on here? Uh, so the man who was yelling uh, kind of met, you know, takes stock of the crew, looks at you with your bow out, and like, okay. Uh, see Serret, big dude, cape, sword, seems to recognize him a little bit more, <laughs> gives him a little more deference. And then Orin and Steingrimmer. He doesn't even know what to make of those two. Many people don't. And uh, he's like, oh, uh, soldiers? Uh, uh, it doesn't matter. We're, we're, we're glad that you're here. We were jumped by... Uh, I, I'm not sure what manner of creatures they were, but they fled into the forest. Uh, unfortunately, our wagon is back there as well. Uh, our guard was injured in the fight. We, we we kind of need help. Uh, Steingrimmer, can you do anything for the injured man? Mm, probably, yeah. He kind of cautiously peeks into the back of the wagon and seems to be approaching it slowly as you not frighten its inhabitants. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you can hear him speaking very softly and very slowly to the people inside. They're, they're not in the back of this wagon. They're in the... Are they? No, they're all in okay. the standing wagon. Okay, just making yeah, sure. Yeah, they're in the back of the standing wagon. Yep. So I'll, I'll just go follow them to make sure that no arrows come whizzing out to... And I'll keep my eye out for whizzing the arrows. No, no, from the bushes <laughs> or something. I'm very oh, okay. cautious of, like, whizzing black arrows coming from unexpected directions. <laughs> I can't imagine why. <laughs> I don't. 
I don't, I don't know why you would be paranoid about that. That seems so silly. But I'm going to definitely try to catch one if one does come out of somewhere. Okay. I will let you know. <laughs> so you're heading into the brush? Um, just to where... Or just peeking around the side? Yeah, we're just going to we'll check out this injured guy, see how bad he is. Okay. Uh, he's pretty... He's pretty bad. Something got a hold of him. Um, it looks like claw marks. Uh, the blood has been somewhat cleaned up by the woman in the back, but she's clearly not a medic or a cleric or trained in any way to deal with this. She, her dress is fairly blood splattered, and uh, she's dressed. All of them are uh, the the woman in the back and and the man who is calling for help are dressed fairly well by middle class. Uh, the other two men are dressed more like farm hands. And the man in the back is clearly a soldier. Uh, uh, breastplate, he's got greaves that have been removed. Um, he's got a sword that's off to one side in this wagon. And this woman is doing what she can with basically no supplies and no training. So yeah, Sam Grimber kind of heaves himself up into the back of his wagon and just very gently takes over <laughs> <laughs> from from the hysterical woman uh, cleaning and treating this guy with the few supplies that they have back there which looks to be water and linen bandages and that's about it I'll uh, try to take her mind off of what's going on by asking her if she can describe the monster that attacked her um large cats they they appeared out of nowhere and disappeared as quickly they can't be left to roam the forest though why is this your forest well we we live not far from here and if they're it's it's dangerous for them to be left alone they they need to be tracked quickly well we can do that um Dungum, how long are you going to be there do you think well, there's only so much I can do without, you know, more than just bandages. Is this wagon capable of uh, going, like moving? Mm -hmm. The horses are still attached to it? Yep, still got horses. So this just happened? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I suggest you... Uh, Take this man to wherever you live and uh, getting him tended to properly. Unfortunately, uh, Steingrimmer is kind of our tracker, um, so he needs to come with us if we're going to track these things down. Or at least track his assistant. Track his assistant. And she kind of nods numbly at that. You know, she's hearing the words. Whether she's comprehending them is hard to say, but she's listening at least. But uh, but never fear, we'll we'll track these foul beasts down and wreak mighty vengeance upon their feline heads. Uh, the the other uh, the man who is calling for help, the one that's uh, dressed fairly well, has come around to the back of the wagon as well and and heard the last bit of this conversation. Uh, we would reward you. Um, if we will. We'll take, uh, we'll take our guard back into town, if you wish. Uh, I I can't fight. I don't think the boys can either. But uh, if you can make it, the next town over is Stargan. Stargan. Yes. Who should I ask uh, for uh, when I reach Stargan? What's your What are your names? I'm Erasmus. I I'm sorry, I'm Erasmus Drake. I, I'm the alderman there. You, you can't miss the town. Uh, just ask anybody for me. Uh, we will we'll take everyone and uh, and go. If you're sure this is something you can handle on your own. Oh yes. Yeah, so, um. Just uh, if anyone in town is worried about these uh, beasts, just um, tell them the squall and the serendipitous riddle fist quicksot is on the case, and that should set their minds at ease. I he nods like that means something. 
point at the gold <laughs> lettering on my back and show it to him. He, he nods readily. He's like, of course, yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, okay, we'll we'll go, we'll go. And so he, uh, he waits for Steingrimmer to exit the wagon, and the two guys that were waiting on the side, they hop in the back as well and kind of oh. hold down the guard. What was the name of the town again? Stargun. Stargun. Yeah. But like it sounds, star gun. A G E N. I will type. I got it. Okay. Tapped by mystery cats. Okay. Mystery cats indeed. Okay. So yeah, they sort of pile into the wagon, and Erasmus gets into the driver's seat and heads off very quickly. So, with Steingrimmer's assistance, I'd like to try to find these tracks. Okay. Hmm. Good assisting, Steingrimmer. <laughs> Don't you blame Steingrimmer for this? <laughs> Um, so I guess we don't find anything? Um, you find bits and pieces of stuff that look like very, very large cat paws, but they seem to stop and start a lot. Like they're bamfing in and out of existence? Possibly. Do you know of any magical creatures that bamf in and out of existence, Steingrimmer? Alright. Okay. Um, so does Steinkerman know anything about such beasts? Mm. Uh, kind of. Mm. A large beast that bamf in and out of existence. Cat-like in form. Yeah, he... Yeah. Uh, you hear the elves, the druids talk about them sometimes. Remnants from the old world. But they don't really exist anymore. Which old world? The old world of the elves. Oh. This kind of looks at you funny. Okay. We should talk about that sometime. But, um, to the matter at hand, what are they called? I don't know. Do you know how to, uh, yes. fight them? How do I? How to fight them? You know any, um, any tinctures we could smear on our swords? Any bombs that might be effective against them? <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. They they don't really exist anymore, so... Hmm. Never really had to know how to fight one. Well, do you smell anything? Do they have any distinctive smell? I don't smell them. Well, I guess we'll just poke around the forest and hope we stumble across their tracks. Okay. Alright. So we'll go a bit further afield and try to, uh, maybe we should split up to cover more ground. I say. You want to split the party? Well, um,. I'll take Sarah and Steingrimmer can take Orin. I trust Steingrimmer to take better care of Orin than I might. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So Steingrimmer will track on his own. You gonna track on your own? Yeah, we'll meet up uh, back here in like five minutes. We don't want to get too okay. far apart. All right. So you roll your survival. Hey. Hey. Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so when you when you recoup or recoup back here, you both come to the same conclusion. The last area that you can find a concentration of, of tracks is right there. Right there. Can, do they follow? Do they just bounce out of existence there? Or? 
They seem to be patrolling this area, like they're making a lair or a nest. Hmm. Making a lair or a nest where? Um, in these areas, in these trees, apparently. In these trees on this map? Like that close? Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. I guess we should be a bit more sneaky then. <laughs> I will try to sneak closer to their lair. Okay. Roll yourself. Where are you sneaking? Closer to the lair, where I guess the, their lair might be. So you're coming up here? So I think they're in these trees? This is where you found the concentration of, chat, of tracks, is up here. Okay. Yeah, I guess I'll uh, sort of poke off in this direction here, where the trees seem to be thick. So you're up here? Yeah. Okay. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Yeah, roll for everybody else now. I'll switch over to battle music. Yeah. I will give you a surprise round. Nice. Because you actually did sneak up on them. Oh, cool. Because they rolled for crap. How many of them are Which there? means I rolled for crap. They're fucking huge! They, yeah, they are. As they blink back into existence. <laughs> so I snuck right through the middle of them? You basically came around, yeah. You came around... As they were stalking, and they blinked back into existence. But you get a surprise round. Alright, what can I so... do? Mm -hmm. Well, he's got a best bow out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. My bow counts as a monk weapon since I'm proficient in it because of my Kensei stuff. Okay.
Don't get to attack twice. Okay. Okay. Actually, three times if I want. Actually. I'm just going to uh, log in and out real quick. Okay. There's disadvantage at close range, but I'm 10 feet away, so I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that doesn't work. Oh, just fire three times at it with my bow. Okay. Does surprise mean I get advantage? No, surprise just means they don't. Oh, okay. Um, they don't act for a round. So which of them hits? Uh, the first shot hits where you see the giant cat. Um, but as soon as you hit it, it it sort of twinkles out of existence and actually shows up about five feet away from where you saw it. Uh, which oh. I think, yeah. Um, so that will do damage. The first attack and the third mm -hmm. attack will both do damage. So the first and the third attack will do damage. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, for the second one, I'll use my one with the blade feature and fun one key point to add a d6 damage to it. Ooh, fancy. And this all counts as magical damage, too. Okay. Um, so that's 24, 28 damage total. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's real good. Uh, anything else you'd like to do? Mm, I used my bonus action for that. So... so yeah, maybe I'll step back deeper into the trees. Hopefully okay. they don't uh, they have a harder time seeing me. Although I can't take the hide action because I already used up all my stuff. So. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll shout out to the others. Beware! Beware. Anyway, I'm doing my stepping back into the trees, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Sarah. Well, he can only go so far. Uh, 
we'll get that close. And Steingrimmer goes by the wagon. And Oren goes behind the wagon. Because he's not stupid. Yeah. Oh, I can choose another Kensei weapon. I just noticed. Because oh. I hit 6th level. I'll do that later though. Okay. Uh, it is your go again. Um... So this is the first round where they actually get to do stuff. This is the first real round. Yeah. Okay. Well, my last strategy turned out to be a winning one, so I will fire thrice with my bow. Okay. My white cello thong bow. Oops. I shoot myself in the head. Oops. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Um. So those first two are misses, I imagine. Yes, those first two would be misses. Seven piercing, I'll pump another key point in there. Thirteen. Thirteen. Alright. <clears throat> oh, wait. Never mind, never mind. I will scratch that. I won't add the extra dice. Oh, okay. I will instead attempt a stunning strike. Okay. So he has to succeed on a constitution saving throw or be stunned. Um, what right. is my saving throw? Um... Eight plus proficiency bonus plus wisdom modifier. So eleven plus uh, fourteen is my. Oh, he got a nine. So. Yeah. 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 So he is um. He. He's stunned until the end of my next turn. Okay. Okay. So he's stunned. This guy's not. So the tentacles come out. It's gonna be a hentai issue. <laughs> the two hits on Sarah. He can take it. Uh, first one is a hit, and the second one is a critical hit. Oh, shit! Uh, so that is... Me too. Thirty-three points of damage to Sarah. To Sarah. I do not want to be on the receiving end of that. <laughs> yeah, it is no bueno. All right, it's Sarah's turn though, so he's gonna smash it right back. One that'll hit. Two is a critical. Nice. Good job, Sarah. So he hits it back for 17 points of damage. Not too bad. Uh, Sangrimmer has his axe. Oh wait, this wagon's in my way. Go to the map wagon. And he pulls out his axe, he only gets one hit. So he's not super proficient in it. That's a miss. And Orin is not going to do anything to this thing until he gets closer. <laughs> he's going to hide behind behind the wall of meat that That's is Sign Grimmer and Sarah. <laughs> That's a sound strategy. 
He's second level. He's, he's <laughs> gonna stay down here. Uh, it is your go. Alright, so this time... I am going to fire two arrows. Can I see this one? Past the uh, the second one? Like, can, can I see? Um, they're both large creatures, so... Unless you move. Okay, I'm gonna move... Down to here-ish. Okay, yeah. Can, can I see each other through the, uh, blah, through the trees from here? Yeah. Okay. Two arrows for this guy, one arrow for this guy. Oh shit. These are my custom made okay. red arrows. I'm firing. How many mm -hmm. have I fired so far? You have done six. Okay, so I have six left. This is gonna, I should have got more of these made. I hope I didn't break them. Oh well, fuck it. It looks epic. It's all that matters. Oh fuck. I only have the first one. Okay, well, I'm gonna add the stunning strike to it again. 11 okay. piercing damage. And uh, he has to make a constitution saving throw of DC 14. <laughs> He made it that time. Roll the 20. Fuck. 11 points. Okay. So he is no longer stunned. What is your current AC? 17. 17. Ooh. Yay! So he tries to whap you, but only one whap actually makes it through. 15 points of damage. Ivy. Uh, <laughs> sorry. This guy will whap on. Stare at some more. That's ah, oh, those are both whiffs. That's actually a critical. That blows. Okay. Uh, Sarah attempts to hit. Uh, first one fails. Second one connects, but hits an illusion. Goddamn. This guy's actually standing over here. Shangrima runs up, pops him with an axe, and misses because they suck. <laughs> you know, Oren's gonna hide. <laughs> Here we go. That there was not are. looking good, boys. It's not looking good. Okay, I drop my bow, brandish my flute, and speak to bonk him. Bonk him. Okay, two thonks for now. Do either of those hit? Um, the 9 definitely won't. The 13 will, though. Okay. So, uh, we'll spend a key point to use Flurry of Blows to attack twice more. Ooh. Burning up all my key points. Yep. Yeah. That one will do. That one will do. Okay, I will, uh... I'll see how he's looking as I spoil damage for these and then maybe add another D6 of damage onto one of them if he's still alive. Okay. So that's, um, it's 15, 22 damage. Still up. I'm still here. You, Hello? Your picture froze. Hello? So did yours. Oh, okay. Now you're moving. So are I you. think that was roll 20. Yeah. Alright, so 22? Uh, 22. Is he still up? He's still up. Okay, I'll burn another key point. Add 5 points of damage. Okay. He's still up, but he's, he's bleeding pretty heavy. He's not looking good. Okay. I only have one key point uh, left. Whap you. 
Damn it. What do you mean, damn it? I'm just a little no. Damn I'm it. I can't gnome. hit you. Uh, the other one hit Sarah, though. Twice. Seven. For 24 points of damage. Holy shit, I'm going wow. Sarah. Yeah, Sarah's not looking great. Um, not looking good. There, though, returns fire. Ooh, it's two good hits in. Another 22 points of damage. And Steingrimmer misses. God damn it, Steingrimmer. God damn it. God damn it, Steingrimmer. Thorn <laughs> will hide. Alright, here we go. Oh, I made a smoothie today. Did Banana, you? Banana and spinach. That's Did what you I like had. it? Yeah, it was pretty good. Good. Frozen bananas. Oh, I didn't have to put well, ice that's... in there. Yeah, that's what I did. Uh, my smoothies were a fresh banana, but frozen strawberries and spinach. Oh, yeah. Same idea. That sounds. I, I always like that one. That would be mm -hmm. good. Yeah, yeah. Frozen strawberries are the best. I miss my smoothies a lot. Oh fuck off! Okay, I'm I'm uh going to. That's with your longbow. Is that what you? Oh, meant whoops! To use? Sorry, no, that's not what I meant to use. Haha. -ha. Okay. Okay. Oh. Um. Okay. So yeah, I'll just flap this guy three times then. I'll save my last key okay. for when I really need it. Uh, the two nineteens will hit. Okay. Uh, thirteen. Huh. And he is down. That is just enough. Yeah. To take him down. He sort of flickers in and out of existence. Does he actually disappear, like fade out of existence? No, he just flickers a little bit. Okay. But he is, I mean, he's corporeal. Okay. He has a body, it just flickers. All right. This guy, this guy's gonna continue to beat up on Sarah because Sarah's looking pretty bad. Those are two hits. Sixteen. That's an additional twenty-six points of damage. Hang on a sec. Okay. Don't want to say something goulash funny. Goulash is ready. Oh, I'm goulash. Some. Get some. Get some goulash. <laughs> I will if we're done. We can take a break. No. <laughs> no, we're playing. I'm, I'm focusing. Alright. I gotta take a break to eat something at some point anyway, so. Well, get your goulash. Mm -hmm. Oh, what? If you if you need to take a break for food, that's fine. I will have goulash later. You you should have it when I take my break for my food. I I understand that's the point that you're going for. <laughs> <laughs> goulash is good. Uh, yeah, I agree. You should uh, call it goulash because it's so good. 20, 20, that was a dad joke. <laughs> yeah, I'm writing that this episode. Title. No. <laughs> <laughs> it is now. Uh, I said 26 points of damage, right? Uh, uh, 25, I thought. I could be wrong. Let me look. Do I use a dice roller? Yep, you're right. No, it's 26. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's 26. Okay, oh. ow. So... Yeah, Sarah's not looking awesome. K 
Uh, but he will fight back. Because that is what he does. That will hit both. He's gotta get better numbers. I'm on my way. Twelve. That was really sad. Clearly he's been weakened. <laughs> that will hit. Sign Grimmer finally hit somebody. For ten points. Warren's not getting involved. It is your go. I will run in there with my 40 movement speed. Yes. Watch out. And uh, I've hit three times with my flute. Oh, wait, am I doing this right? Hang on a second. Oh. Okay, whoops. I should mm -hmm. I can only attack these extra strikes have to be unarmed. Unless Oh. Um hang on. Can't say weapons. I thought couldn't say a weapons counted as a hunt. I thought so too. Maybe they do. Use blah 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 blah. Now, it doesn't say they can be used interchangeably with unarmed attacks. Yeah. So, yeah, this... My third strikes need to be unarmed. I don't know how much that affects... Mm -hmm. ...things. Not much, I don't think. I don't think much, no. Oh, oh. Actually, it doesn't affect anything, now that I think about it, because my... Yeah. Yeah, it's all the same damage. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um... Iron Flute twice. And unarmed once. Alright. The first one doesn't count. Bam. Because you just revealed its actual location. Um, the iron flute has reach. Well, can no? I just step closer for my second attack? Yeah. Yeah, you can. <clears throat> so then the other two would hit. Nice. I will use my last key point to try to stun it. Okay. How is this one looking? Is it looking beat up at all? Um. Yeah. Yeah, it's looking beat up. A little bloody. A little dented. And it is stunned. Oh, it's stunned. Okay. Well, ignore that third roll. It's um, 11 damage. Okay. 11. Oh, hang on. Um... Yeah, eleven. And stunned. Okay. And stunned. Alright, Sarah's gonna you know, hang back a minute. Actually, Sarah's gonna use second win. I'm just gonna reload the roll twenty page real quick. Okay. Keep going. Yeah, Sarah will second wind. And whiff twice. Or whiff once, actually. That's a critical from Stein Grimmer, though. Nice. Uh, and that is enough 
to take down the beast. Hooray! As it lies, or stands, stunned. Then Grimmer does a killing blow. Finally. Huzzah! Out. Huzzah! Thumbs ups for everyone. Thumbs up all around. <laughs> <laughs> Double thumbs up. All around. Oh, let's see if we can find their lair. Maybe they've uh, stolen something that needs to be returned. Okay. So do an investigation. Oh, does there need to be looked after? Well, none of you really have heals. That's true. So... I mean, Sengrim can bandage him up, but... He'll need rest. Not really much of an investigator. No, it looks more like they were building a nest. It doesn't look like they dragged anything of value over there yet. Well, we'll mess up their nest so that any other disappearing cats that happen by don't get any ideas. Alright. <laughs> okay, you've defeated the disappearing cats. Hmm. Huzzah! Is, is this set wagon at all salvageable? Like, mm -hmm. um... Yeah, it's flipped over. I know you said the horses are missing. Um, but it looks like whatever was inside is still mostly in its containers. There's a couple of crates that have been busted open, but I mean, if you if you flipped it back up, the wheels still seem to be intact. Can we find the horse tracks? Mm -hmm. I think roll survival with assistance from Steinkrumer. There you go. Assistance from Stein Grimmer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It> is, uh... <laughs> yeah, you can track the horses down. Um, one is a little lame. It probably just twisted its foot. Uh, but the other is perfectly fine. And they're not terribly far away. They were headed back home, basically. But they okay. can easily be corralled, brought back to the wagon. All right, with I'll... a decent animal handling check. I'll try to corral them and... Uh... Lead them back. You have animal handling? Mm, no. Well, I mean, I can attempt it. I'm not proficient in it. Okay. I'm gonna say Steingrim does if you don't. Okay, well, well I'll let Steingrim do it. Okay. <laughs> this is really good, actually. <laughs> All right, he, he gathers up the horses and leads them back to the wagon. Do do do. Harnesses them back up. He's hmm? Can we harness them back up? Oh yeah. Yeah, you just need to get the wagon flipped up. Well, I'll help with that. Uh, you're gonna help with that? Well, I'll start heaving at it and see if anyone else gets the idea that I need some assistance flipping it over. Okay, Sangrimer hands the horses off to Orin. And he and Sarah try. I mean, Sarah pretty banged up, but he tries. And between the two of them, with assistance from you, they, they manage to get the wagon flipped back up. And Steingrimmer starts patiently hooking the horses up, and, and he starts to load the boxes back onto the wagon. I'll start driving one contents of inside. cats over to load onto the wagon, too. Ew. These things are huge. Well, again, I'll start pulling making straining noises until someone helps. <laughs> Sarah says, what are you doing? Um, we need a trophy. Also, maybe we can get these skinned and uh, make some kind of dark cloak. Maybe it'll have magic properties. Maybe it'll allow the user to vamp in, in and out of existence. Okay. But if we put these things on the back of that wagon, where are we going to sit? We won't. We'll walk alongside. 
You can sit on there. He says as he leans against his sword. Yeah. I mean, you can sit on there. You can sit on top of the cat, but the rest of us will walk along on side, alongside. Sit on top of the cat. Goes and grabs him by the scruff of the neck, starts hauling it. And Steingrimmer pushes the crates to the, you know, very back of the wagon to make room for these corpses that are coming on to it. I grab the, uh, lift them up. Grab the tentacles and do my part lifting those. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Gets the tail up there. Yeah. <laughs> make oh. sure all the bits are up there. <laughs> that takes a minute, but you can you can get both loaded up. Or in his in the driver's seat, mm -hmm. although he doesn't actually know how to drive a wagon, so he's just holding the reins for effect at this and point. Maybe let Sir do that and you come down here and walk. I'll jump down regrettingly. <laughs> and Sir will get up into the driver's seat. Where are we going anyway? Targon. For a reward. Where is that? That oh, I assume it's that way since we have, didn't pass through it. Okay, so it's just that way. Well, further down the road rather than back the way we came. Hopefully. It just nods tiredly. You don't have maybe, any idea where you're going. Well, do you? maybe there'll be a sign. A sign. This way is Dargan. Saren shakes his head. The like, guy. Right. So the wagon not, takes off. Hmm? I'm not very heavy, so I will um, sort of pop up on the back of the wagon periodically, on top of the cats, and look out for any smoke I can see rising above the trees. Okay. But then I'll hop back uh, down it, so that Oren doesn't get jealous. Okay. <laughs> so. Uh, you travel, it, it really doesn't take too long. Um, traveling down the road a little ways, it is getting on to evening now. Uh, you do eventually see not only smoke um, of, you know, above the, the trees, but also uh, what appears to be the upper half of a very large tower. Cresting above the trees as well. Similar to the Paragon Towers and such that we passed? No, this one is a very different construction. Uh, it looks newer, for one. It doesn't look ruined. And uh, it, it has more of an Aurum design than the, the very old Paragon Towers. Okay. Where does this keep going? Is that your village? Probably. Kind of wingles his way. Takes the wagon. There is actually a turn off, and uh, far from the the main trade road, there you do enter the village of Starkin, according to the sign. Yay! Got in one try. Give everyone a thumbs up. <laughs> everyone double thumbs up. Uh, so this is actually, I mean, it seems to be a a, a decent sized village. There's more than a dozen houses here. The, there's an inn not far inside the city limits. A big two-story job that's in good repair. Um, the tower that you saw above the trees sort of dominates the village. It's towards the back, but it's so large that you can see it from the front gates. Hmm. It It is probably five, six stories tall. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, made of kind of light gray stone. So this is definitely newer design. It's not an older ruin or anything. Um, but yeah, it, it sort of sort of dominates the landscape around here. Um, All the other houses are made of wood and thatch. <clears throat> is there an inn in town? Mm, right inside. Yep. Called. It's called the Absent Angel. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, probably, first of all, we should uh, 
get the turret situated so he can uh, take care of himself a little bit. Okay. Unless you want to, unless you'd like to accompany us when we get our reward, but I won't. I mean, you can trust me to divide it equally. I hope you know. I think you got a lot of faith set in this reward. Why, why wouldn't I? We have proof. We did the deed. Cats are in the back. Mm -hmm. Not that I really knew this for the reward. But still. That's still. I did have a lot of my stuff stolen from me. Recently. You did. So Sarah is not opposed to an inn rest. Um, like I said, it's just inside the city gates. And, uh, but as you approach, the it is locked tight. Like, the shutters are drawn, there's nobody outside, and the door is actually locked shut. This is the inn? Mm-hmm. According to well, the sign. I'll knock on the door and say, Never fear, the cats are dead. You can open up now. Everyone come out! Your town has been liberated from the disappearing cats. Everything's fine. <laughs> I, Squone, the Serendipitous Riddlefist Quixot, with my stalwart companions, Serret, the Pyre Knight, and Steingrimmer of the Woods, accompanied by young Orin, um, TBD. Uh, we have liberated <laughs> you. <laughs> TBD. <laughs> <laughs> make this proclamation. <laughs> I think people do come out of their homes uh, and some of the shops that are, are starting to close up for the evening. So you look at you fun. curiously. I point to the cats, I jump up on top of them, hop up and down a little bit to show that they're dead. There's a lot of murmuring from the assembling crowd as they get a little closer to the wagon to take a look at just what you hauled in here. I hold at their tentacles to show them no ordinary cats, as you can see. They got tentacles coming out of their faces. They do have tentacles coming out of their faces. <laughs> yeah, a dead. lot of murmuring and whispering from the assembled crowd. And finally, one younger woman speaks up. You killed things? Yep. I show her my bloody flute. And he has the wounds to show for it, I point at Sarah. He took one down too. Or, uh, Sarah does not seem to be enjoying the attention right now. So yeah, but, uh, the, uh, the talk intensifies amongst the crowd. But as you can see, he needs a place to recuperate after his mighty battle against one of these hell beasts. So um, if you guys could let us in here, or if, if one of you could perhaps offer a bed for him to take his ease, perhaps a bowl of stew. And the young woman who spoke first speaks up again. Um, well, the innkeeper is speaking with the alderman. Maybe you should talk to him first. No, oh, we're headed there anyway. Oh. oh. Okay, good. This is Alderman Erasmus? Yes. Yeah, we met him on the road. Oh, uh, well, I could take you. I could take you to the hall. All right, I hop down and offer my hand. I am uh, scrolling the strand of this riddle fist quicksaw. And you are? She seems, again, a little stunned by the name, as most people are. And the mustache with the feathers it. in it. Yeah, so, yeah, the feathered <laughs> mustache and the bloody flute and the dancing on dead cats with tentacles and the... <laughs> The code and everything else about Squo that makes him awesome and ridiculous. <laughs> uh, my name's Mara. Hmm. Just Mara? Just Mara. And she kind of just looks at you a little strange. Uh, that's quite a name. Ah, uh, yes. Well. 
I suppose. Although I, I sort of am of the opinion that everyone should have uh, names which encompass their entire being. And rather than, I mean, I'm sure there's more to you than just Mara. Perhaps you are Mara of the, well, I don't know, what do you do? I'm Miller's daughter. Mara of the Mill. And I su <laughs> She just kind of laughs and she's walking along. I, I sew on the side to the stew here. Hmm. I suppose that's it. Mara, the, the stitching seductress of the mills. <laughs> sort of bleeds out the <laughs> I don't think I, I'd quite a, uh, I don't think that quite applies. Well, you get the idea. It's not my place I to, to do your name. You can do all your people your have names like that, though? No. My brother. But we were kind of the outliers in that area. Oh. And finally, she takes you to a, a, a good-sized building. Looks like it doubles as the city hall and private residence. Judging by uh, the curtains from the upstairs, look a lot more homely than the ones that are downstairs. So she says, "This is the city hall. Um, the alderman is in there." All right. Um, it's alright if I just go in? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll go in. Oh, it's a pleasure right. to meet you. It is. Uh, you too. I do a big sweeping bow. Of course, yes. And she seems still mildly puzzled from your interaction, as most people are. Uh, we enter the city hall, which is, you know, about what you would expect from a, a, a mid-sized village like this it's not poor exactly but it's certainly not it's not warm yeah uh and up at the front on the raised section the dais near a lectern is erasmus uh the lady from the back of the wagon that you recognize the two other gentlemen who were there sort of sitting off to one side and a man you don't recognize that are having a fairly furtive but um, distressing discussion. These two guys who aren't Erasmus are having this discussion? No, no. Erasmus, uh, his wife is listening, the lady is listening, and the other guy you don't recognize are having that discussion. The other two dudes are just sitting off to one side. They're not really involved. Okay, I stand... Well, I was the door open when I uh, came in. It was unlocked. It was shut, but unlocked. Okay. Well, I sort of slam it behind me and hold aloft my bloody flute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Quite an entry. <laughs> so the conversation stops dead as everyone turns to look at the door. And uh, the Catch many. You the man you don't recognize says what in the name and then Erasmus steps forward and it's like uh, Squone yeah. yes right yes oh, okay uh, you you found the beast then yeah and we uh, messed up their lair after we dispatched them. we have their bodies out in the cart which we managed to salvage we rescued the horses as well um, I was wondering if there are any leather workers in town which who could perhaps uh yeah. also yes, no, that's it. You were saying? I was saying I hadn't expected the cargo to return. Uh, he kinda nods over at the two guys off to one side who head out immediately pushing past you. And out the door. Uh, certainly, we will see what we can do with the with the beasts. Uh, and kind of looks, 
concerned. I might have another uh, small job for you. Oh, excellent. Uh, we seem to be having a run of uh, odd creatures in and about the town surrounds. Uh, this time, a small problem in the basement of the inn. Yeah. Is that why it's locked up? Yeah, yeah call. Okay. Dying. You alright? No, I'm dying. I mean, aside from I'm that. terminal. Other than dying? Yeah, I'm fine. Dying is slow death. It's okay. Uh, so yeah, the, the other man, the one that you didn't recognize. Uh, this is damn right, that's why the inn's locked up. Can't have those things scampering around. Pooping in people's food. Well, unhygienic. I mean, I was expecting something a bit more... Ah. Uh, scaled to my skill level than rats, if we're talking about rats here. Unless they're rats that pop in and out of existence, like those cats. That might be more of a challenge. But still, I think you'll really find them plenty catcher. challenging there, friend. And Erasmus kind of like pats the other guy on the shoulder, like, you know, okay, okay, okay. Uh, my understanding is that these are no ordinary rats, just as your quarry before was no ordinary mountain cat. Although I did disp dispatch a uh, den of were rats. So I do have some expertise in the area. I don't think these are them. Well, I'll go take a look. But if you, if you could rid us of them, and allow us to open the inn again, that would be that would be incredibly helpful while we figure out precisely what's going on. Uh, it would help if our resident mage would answer his door. Uh, but that's none of your. None of your concern right now. Uh, but yeah, if you would be kind enough to go to the inn, Burgess will unlock it for you, and we will discuss your, your payment. Well, before we get this... to that, I did get scratched up a, a bit by those cats. Is there anyone in the village who could perhaps um, tend to my wounds before I head straight back into battle? If these rats are as dangerous as you say. Well, we... Or, we do have a cleric of Tenum. Uh, I think he's here. Failing that, it I could, could perhaps just rest for an hour or so. It's 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 up to you. We could we can call for our cleric, or you're you're more than welcome to take your ease for a moment. Uh, well, let's see what this cleric will do. He nods. Okay. Uh, I'll go fetch him. You can you can stay here. Okay. And Burgess will go unlock the inn. And Burgess makes a noise and storms out with Erasmus too, leaving you alone oh. in the city hall with the woman from the wagon, still sort of standing awkwardly at the dais, all alone now, still blood splattered. Still looking a little freaked out. You seem a little uh, recovered from when last we met. Uh, I didn't get your name. I am Skull. This friend of this Priel. 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 How do you spell that? Type. And you are Erasmus's uh, Erasmus. significant other? Why? Just wondering. His, just his making wife. conversation. Yes. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. Sorry, we, I thought uh, you said wife, not wife. 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 Uh, I'm very appreciative that you brought the cargo back with you. That would have been a difficult loss. 
this close to to winter. What was in the cargo? Oh, uh, mostly wool. Other furs, pelts, things like that. We're a textile community here. Hmm. It's one of our primary industries. But as you can see, the land's not entirely suited for livestock, so we we trade with some of the neighboring villages in the zone, those that raise goats and sheep higher up in the mountains. Yeah, it's quite cold here. We have to stop and make camp and make uh, warmer garments for a couple of our companions. Oh, well, you should... Um, you should furnish you with some, I mean... Well, if you could skin those cats and make them into some kind of garment, that'd be ideal. Oh, uh, anyone could, our tailors could. I'm not well, sure why you would want that, but that's fine. Well, I'm kind of hoping they'll allow the wearer to advance in and out of existence, but it might be a long shot. Perhaps. It sounds like you might need an enchantment placed on it. If we can find out where Esagoras is, then perhaps we can do that for you too. Is that the wizard who won't answer his door? That's our mage, yes. It's strange that these creatures would appear and he, he isn't here to... Normally when things like this pop up, he's the first to jump into the fray. Does he live in that tower? Yes. I have to say it's, it's uh, a refreshing change to see you so accepting of magic here. I just came from Orem where things are a lot different. different. Well, we are in the... We're in the limbo between... We're not quite under the protection of Avris, but we're also a little out of the reach of Orem. It's a comfortable truce. Well, after I've dealt with these rats or whatever, maybe I could try climbing that tower to see what's what inside. See if your wizard is uh, ill or something. It would be appreciated. We haven't been able to get inside. Uh, unfortunately, he's really our only experienced magic user. So we're not really equipped to deal with his little traps and tricks. Um, I'm sure they're harmless, but... Well, we have a wizard in training of, of a sort with us. Might be a good learning experience for him. <laughs> he might fry himself. Well, that would be that would be helpful. And then at that point, Erasmus returns with a priest of uh, Tenem in the usual dark green robes. And he says, "You're lucky. One more day, and he would have been gone, but I got him." Where where were you headed? I say to the priest. Wherever the winds take me. Oh, you, you're a traveler. I understand you're hurt. We're headed to Abris and if you want to tag along. No, no, no. No, I've seen Abris. Well, the other way is Orem, and you don't want to go there. It's a lot. A lot of the world between Abris and Orem. I suppose. A lot of the world. Hmm. The forest. The forest is nice. And the mountains. Yep. And the mountains. And the mountains. I gotta uh, got quickly to... quit team speak again and come back. Okay. What was going on? Or I got distracted. Uh, the priest of Tenem was talking oh, yeah. to you. Oh, yeah. And was um, going to heal you. Right. I'm Skolan, by the way. What's your name? I, I lost you there. What did you say? I just asked for his name. Oh, oh. Flana. 
plan out. Did you just make that up? No. Okay. I can spell it for you. E H L A G N A. Oh. Oh, I wasn't too far off. <laughs> nope. Not too far <laughs> off. Priest of Tenum. Starving. Uh, yeah, so I have to take care of some rats or, or something, so if you could look to my wounds before I head back into danger, that'd be great. So he says a prayer, and probably take a decent size to your wounds. How many hit points are you down? Um, 15. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that's fine. Takes a few spells, but he gets you healed to full. Yay. And then he has to hit the road. Uh, my thanks. Are you sure you won't join us on our way to Abris? Positive. I might run into you on the road. What do you, um... Just traveling for fun? What else is there? It helps to have a quest. Something to give you direction and purpose, I've found. But everyone's different. Sometimes just the destiny or just the journey is better than a destination. I'll have to think about that. Do that. Yeah, go he to the... gives a little nod and leaves. You going to the inn? Yep. All right, Rasmus will come with you. To get back to the inn, uh, the other two guys have been unloading the wagon this whole time. The cat corpses are still there, but they're like very gingerly stepping around them to get the boxes off. Steingrimmer is helping. Okay. Get the boxes off, trying to pack the stuff that's fallen out back into the ones that have opened. <laughs> um, being very conscientious Gosh. about it. Burgess is standing next to the inn door. It is slightly right. ajar. The windows are all still shuttered up. And he doesn't look eager to go inside. How long does it take for me to regenerate the key points, I wonder? I think it's a long rest. Because I burned all my key points. Can't back down now, though. That'll look bad. Oh. Short rest. Actually, I say I hesitate in the doorway. Many thanks to your uh, priest. Um, but I think I will just take my A's right about here and make sure nothing gets by me um, while I meditate before I confront whatever lies below. The bird just kind of snorts. Whatever you say. So I sit cross legged in the doorway facing in, do like a lotus pose, start med meditating. Okay. I'll get my key points back. Okay. That's pretty good. I didn't know that short rest did it. Yep. It only takes uh, 30 minutes of the rest meditating to regain my key points. How long is a short rest then, anyway? Uh, I think an hour is the minimum for a short rest. Yeah, I think so too. He says I'll, just, I'll meditate it. for the whole whole hour though, so that I don't. Uh, okay. So that people don't think I'm just shirking. They don't think you're shirking. Well, so they don't think that I'm losing my nerve right in the doorway, but I'm definitely up to monk business. Definitely meditating. Okay. Definitely. Mm. Got 
definitely, definitely. All right. So you rest. You get your key points back. Sarah uses a hit die to help himself. The wagon has been unloaded other than the cat corpses. Oh, crap. Before we left, could I have tried to retrieve my arrows, my white arrows? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You would have had plenty of time. How many of them would I have got back? I think I fired... You can have all. You fired six. Oh, did I only fire six? I can have them all? I thought so. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, yeah, they're very strong. Okay, good. I was hoping so. Yeah, Celos Wood is very strong. Although one was a critical failure. Yeah, one was a critical failure, but you're also shooting at creatures that aren't necessarily there. Okay. So, I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah, Celos arrows are hard to break. Okay. Alright, so get your arrows back. And you meditate for your key points. Your cat corpses are still left in the wagon. The bird just kind of nudges you with his toe. You done? Uh, has are it been you ready? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm ready to go, I see. Well, they're in the basement, or they, they were last time I saw them. Anything else I should, I should know about them? Uh, they're sneaky little buggers. Okay. And there's quite a few of them. Hmm. Oh. Well, since these guys are so magic friendly, I have a thing for this. Maybe. Um. Necklace of fireballs worn as a bow. Seven gems, throw a gem, and it becomes a fireball. Do those have an area of effect type thing? Fireballs? Yeah, they're, they're fireballs, yes. How big is the area of effect? For fireball? I'm looking it up. Alright. I could get the book, but I'm lazy. Yeah, I got it right here. Um. um 20 foot radius sphere centered on the point where I. Wow. 8d6 fire damage. And will ignite. Yeah, they're powerful. They do ignite flammable objects in the area. What's this in made of? Wood. Wood. Oh. Um. Okay, we can't do that then. <laughs> Thought I could just tuck a gem down in the basement. Problem solved. Nope. <laughs> he will light it on fire. Okay, well, we will gird ourselves for battle and head downstairs. Okay. I'll draw my bow. See if I can pick some right. where they get close. So, the bar what? itself, the first floor is completely dark. According to Burgess, you have to go behind the bar and down a side door in order to get to storage. Okay. So at the top of the stairs, as you open the door, you catch a glimpse of light below. Pretty dim, but it's there. Alright, down below we see the light? Mm -hmm. Down below the stairs, yeah, or down the stairs. Okay, well, we go. Right. I'll take the lead. Alright. Serret's behind you, Steingrimmer's behind him, Orin's in the wagon. Yep. <laughs> yep. Can watch over the cats. Yep. That's his job. So you come down the stairs into, I mean, I guess it's a sizable storage room, but it's still just a storage room. And by the time you're halfway down the stairs, the little bit of light goes out. So now it's pitch dark. And we couldn't tell where this light was coming from. Mm -mm. It was just a very general sort of glow, like somebody left a lamp on in a corner. But by the time you get half down the stairs, the light goes out. 
Oh, I do have dark vision. Sixty feet. Yes. Yeah, you do, and uh, Steingrimmer does, but Sarah does not. So you hear a lot of clang bang as he sort of slams into the side of the wall. I um, try not to fall down the stairs. I have some torches. I'll light a torch and pass it to him. Okay. Now he's got a torch. And you guys come down into... A visual aid. A visual aid! Oh shit, I keep forgetting that Dane Enter It is with us. That what? That wizard dude. The leader of yeah, the resistance. Yeah, he's coming. Yeah, he hasn't fought or anything. I've forgotten that he's with us, is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, he's he's just hanging back. He's just trying to get to Abris. Okay. He's not part of the team. He's just... Well, no, no. he's not trying to die. Okay. And he's trying to keep a very low profile, because although this is technically a, a DMZ sort of thing, there are still Pyronites and right. Paragon Knights that okay. patrol here. And the last thing he wants to do is to be dragged back to Orem. So he's mostly like keeping his cloak on, keeping his head down. He's not talking to anybody. Yeah, he's okay. just trying to get to Avris. Do you have a plan for what he's going to do with Avris? If he does, he hasn't told you. Because uh, I would have asked. In fact, if he's not going to tell me, I would have asked repeatedly. I would have been really obnoxious Probably. about it. Yeah, yeah. He, Nothing? He's not I don't wear him though. back? Okay. No. Ask him. No. no. Ask him if they have a wizard academy in Abris. No, they don't have a wizard academy in Abris. Fuck. Fuck. All the mage guilds teach their own. Oh. Oh. We can join a guild then. In theory. I guess we'll figure it out when we get there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sorry to sidetrack. I just remembered that he was with us. Yes, he is with you. But he's keeping a low profile. Shh. Alright, so you get to the storage room. Yeah, it looks like a normal storage room. You can put yourself on the board if you want to. Where would I be coming in? Here. Okay. And then this is a back wall here. Okay. Yeah, I figured the ends of the maps are the walls. Yeah, these are the walls. This is the door. When did I find out the Jack oh, yeah. Dangerous publishing house? Luchin? Luchin? What? In my notes, I've got info. Jack Dangerous publishing house. Luchin. Mm-hmm. That's one of them. That's one of them. So we see nothing? Can I make a perception check? Yes. Looks pretty normal in here. Sarah goes to investigate. Then Grimmer goes to investigate. I'll sort of go to investigate, but I'll keep closer to Sarah than Stein Grimmer because Sarah might need my protection. Okay. Ugh, bugger. Okay. Um, go ahead and roll your initiative, please. 
You can just see these oh, dudes coming. Oh no. Oh no is his Oh no. Battle music. Yep, battle music, please. No surprise round, unfortunately. But you do get to see them come in, at least. All right. Here we go. Streaming out from a hole in the wall. I'll make it big so you can see. Okay. What? What are those? Uh, those are brains those rats with exposed, with brains? exposed brains. Yes, oh, in a no. swarm, streaming out from a hole in the wall. Why didn't he say exposed brains? You buried the lead. <laughs> <laughs> Sneaky! Come on, man. <laughs> that was. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm gonna have to have yeah. words with Burgess. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a thing. All right. Let's see what we're going to do here. Um, let's do that. I don't know what you were talking about. This is a good adventure. I'm having fun. Good. Uh, hold that thought. You make a wisdom save. Oh my please. god. I jinxed myself. As does Serret. Oh boy. Haha. -ha. Alright, what'd you get? Uh, 21. Oh, that's real good. Okay, Serret fails, however. Uh. So these are Can't take reactions. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. So yeah, Sarah fails. You succeed, and the rats hang out where they are for now. You can come to them. Does Sarah make any indication that he just failed some kind of? Mind oh, he's gonna from... in a second because it's his turn. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're gonna roll. I've never used this spell before. A d10. Uh, doesn't move or take any action. So he just he starts playing statue. He's just frozen in place. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. And this giant groomer gets to go. He kind of steps up a little bit. Looks at you. Looks at the swarm. Looks at you again. And he'll go about this far. Pulls out his axe. Sure go. Well, I've got 40 feet of movement. That, that'll do it. Um, well, as I pass Stein Grimmer, I'll say you might be a little bit more effective in bear form, buddy. I don't know. It's up to you. Get my thumbs up as I pass. <laughs> and attack the rats. Alright. Uh, actually, I should have used my bow, I guess. I didn't. Got a few hits in. But then they might have come to me and then. No, I'll just keep doing this. Oh, sorry. Okay. I'll spend a key point just for your flowers. Just pound the shit out of the rats. Ah, oh, that's not great. Are there any of those hit? 
Uh, yeah, actually, anything 12 or above will hit. Oh, nice. That's three. Very nice. Um, I cannot. I guess I could add one to the. Uh, I'll add a d6 to my first hit since I was with my iron feet. Okay. Two. Two. Twenty-five. Twenty-eight. Waste of a key. Or twenty-five. Sorry. Twenty-five. Alright. Okay. Well, shoot. Oh, yeah, that's right. Ha ha ha, I forgot. Alright. It's the swarm's turn. So it swarms all over you. <laughs> But it does. Great. And make a mism save. Another one. Another one. Uh, DC 13. There we go. Yeah. All right, <laughs> fine. Nom, 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 it is. It swarms over you, it doesn't actually attack you. Oh, really? They were trying to get inside my mind. Mm hmm And they failed. They failed, rats. Steal your mind. Minds, comrades. These are mind rats. Mind rats. All right, Sarah. Let's see. He gets another, another chance to beat the DC, and he doesn't, because he's not a wise man. Ah, Sarret. Such a disappointment. So he still he is, I know. He's still stunned. Yeah. Yeah. He's not going to be much use this fight. Jangermido. He doesn't really want to go bare. He doesn't really want to hit you. Uh, he's very conflicted. So he'll just he'll just do one attack. Thankfully it hits. But it only does three points of damage. Oh. These suckers are hard to hit. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Uh go you know, crash it tomorrow with my fleet. You're, you're basically hitting yourself. There. Can I not do that? Yeah, you can. I'm just saying don't don't critically fail. <laughs> okay. Um, and I will use Flurry of Blows again. Okay. Those are some good rolls right there. I would say, yeah, uh, all those are going to hit. Okay, so. Iron Flute. Iron Flute. Oh, nice. Unarmed. Unarmed. So that's 18, 25, 31 damage. That's pretty good. They yep. squirm around a lot, so you're you're connecting and you're hearing them squeak, and you're kind of watching them smush a little bit, but they're still trying to scramble away. I'll just do a bite. What's your AC? 17. 17, yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Twelve points of damage as they scurry off of you. Bastards. And they they're now just five feet away. Sarret. Come on, Sarret. Nope. Not a wise man. <laughs> Just gonna stand there like a doofus. At least he didn't roll a one. Okay. 
Uh, Steingrimmer takes a big swing with his axe now that those rats aren't on you. He feels a little more comfortable. Uh, that will actually not connect to your go. All right. Um, I need to be on to a winning strategy here, so I'm going to whap them with my flute. Just beat him to death with your flute. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what I did last time I ran yes. into rats. Yeah, hey. Go with what works. I'll do flurry blows again. What the hell? <laughs> Good lord. Rat Things blood everywhere. Smear. Yeah, rat I know. Rat blood and rat brains. Yep. Um, unarmed. I didn't roll so great there, but whatever. 14, 19, 24. That's that's enough. Even with your resistances, that is enough. You can eat this swarm of rats and do a big bloody smear <laughs> on the wooden floor. Rat guts and brains cling into the ceiling. <laughs> the horror show down here. <laughs> but they are dead. Nice. Stein Grimmer. Clears off his tunic. I look for something rat to wipe the rat, rat gore off my flute with. Oh, yeah, there's lots of like disused rags and things down okay. here you can clean your flute up with. They're really gross looking, too. They're massive rats with exposed brains, and then, you know, now they're super exposed brains because they've been smushed all over the floor. I'm gonna grab one of the rats that looks most intact. Oh, is Sarah all right now? Yeah, Sarah's fine now. He looks okay. a little confused. I was asking Links. What happened there? I I don't know. I just I tried to think Okay, I should I should do something and then I just couldn't. That's weird. I wasn't sure what to do. I see you took care of it, though. That's kind of a specialty. Like I said, not really You're up to my killer. skill level. You would have been <laughs> in trouble if I'd gotten that spell off. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> Scone doesn't, though. So I'm going to take Scone most... doesn't, no. I'm going to take the most intact rat, that, where you can tell that mm -hmm. it's a rat with an exposed brain, and I take it up to show to Burgess. Sneaky, I'm going to say, and wave it in front of him. <laughs> you couldn't have mentioned the exposed brain? These are mind rats, my friend. I, was, I wasn't sure I actually saw that. I thought it was just a, a trick of my imagination. No, these are mind rats. Your initial impression was correct. One are of they these dead? Strange are creatures, they all dead? Yeah, they're all... You can... I, they're down there. But when do these strange creatures start appearing around town? Uh, it, I saw the first one two or three days ago. I didn't. I don't. I didn't know how many there were. I thought, and I thought it was just a normal rat at first until I went digging for it. And then wow. people started acting strangely at the inn, so I just shut it down. Yeah, they got into my mind, my friend's mind. Um, how long has your wizard been incommunicado? Isagoras? Yeah. How do you spell I that? haven't I seen him in. Oh, uh, type it. I haven't seen him in about a week, which that's not terribly odd. He's, you know, as you would imagine, he's a, a, a book learning fellow. When you get something in his head, he gets a little obsessed with it. Uh, the fact that his doors are locked is strange. Usually right. he'll open if we come calling, but...
Oh, glance over at the tower. Are there any uh, windows like on the second floor, or any windows at all? Mm -mm. No windows whatsoever. Mm -mm. You can see the outlines where there were windows at one point, but they've all been bricked over. I'll uh, go over to um, Oren, and I'll say, you're a clever urchin. Do you have any skill with uh, lockpicks and such? Yeah. We need to get in that tower, I said. That big tower where they said the mage lives? Yeah, but maybe we should leave that for tomorrow and rest for today. Yeah, maybe. I need lockpicks anyway. Well, you don't have... Oh, I guess not. You're in prison. Um, well, can't you improvise? I could whittle you maybe. Some, some wooden picks. No, metal, not wooden. Metal. Mm -hmm. So let's go uh, find a blacksmith and see if we can scrounge up something that might serve the purpose. Okay. Um, Sarah, you should probably uh, check in here and uh, have a nap. And a sandwich. <laughs> and a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> nap and a sandwich. <laughs> He will not fight you on that idea. He's, he's all about napping a sandwich. So he, he'll actually yeah. go inside with Burgess. Is Erasmus still around? Goes... Yeah, yeah, he's standing outside the inn. He's standing by the wagon still, looking concerned. And then looking at the dead bodies in the back of the wagon and <laughs> looking even more concerned. Yeah, if you could, um, if you have a leather worker in town, if you could have him um, take a look at these. Um... Mm -hmm. To uh, maybe see if he can do anything in the garment department with them. Um, me and my young friend here headed over to the blacksmith to uh, see if we can find something that might serve as lockpicks so that we can investigate the tower to see if your wizard's okay. Well, I, I suppose that's all right, considering the circumstances. Well, there's magical uh -huh. disturbances and the sort of main font of magical energies in town is not responsive, so it seems worth it looking into. No, I agree. I agree. Um, I'll show him the well, mind rat probably... exposed brain. Definite magic. And, yeah, Rasmus looks like he's gonna be sick. <laughs> uh, you can put that away now. Thank you. Uh, we have plenty of, of, of tanners and leather workers. I'll have them look at the the beasts here. Uh, the blacksmith is probably closed for the night, but I'll I'll stop by and uh, and put in an order for you. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure he would welcome outsiders after dark, especially with everything we've seen so far today. Uh, but I'll I'll get it taken care of for you if you want to take a rest. Sure. Um. Aside from the mind rats and the uh, disappearing cats, have there uh been any other strange creatures around here lately? I've heard reports of small things going missing. Hmm. Um, cows, tails being tied together, uh, milk going sour, things like that. Uh, no one's seen anything, though. Sounds like children's pranks. But it, it's not really... We don't really have that many children here in the village, so... It just seems an odd coincidence. All right. Well, yeah, I'll, I guess we'll rest up for the night, so we'll be uh, in fighting shape to take on the tower tomorrow. All right. So you are furnished a room, begrudgingly by Burgess, who has to go clean up the rats. I'm not cleaning up the rats. Uh, I know, he's going to go clean up the rats. Um. And so as you have your meal and get settled for the evening, your wizard friend, your actual wizard friend... Pain enter it? Not... Yes. Pain uh, very quietly mentions that 
Those rats are often used as wizard familiars. Do they usually swarm like that? They can. There's too many of them. The more, the larger groups they get, and the smarter they get. So, do you think they're acting under the direction of a wizard, or do you think they got away from a wizard? Then, I think they got away from. Them. Okay. But the fact that they did get away is concerning. Do you want to uh, go to the tower tomorrow? Might be helpful to have. No. Okay. Really. But I suppose I could. Oh, Since thanks. you are escorting me and all. How are you holding up after the whole um, betrayal of your cause and everything? About as well as you might expect. My home's on fire. Everything I ever worked for is destroyed. And I'm a fugitive. Again. Well, um, look on the bright side. You're not Norm anymore. No. I'm not anywhere anymore. I'm in the middle of nowhere. Watching you smash rats. Yep. That's yep. where you are. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, he goes to his room. <laughs> Somewhat dejected. Alright, it is six o'clock for you. Do you want to take a separate break? Sure. Um, get your goulash. You eat. Don't worry about me. Get your goulash. You okay. get goulash. Do you even know what goulash is? Yeah, it's some kind of soup type thing, isn't it? Like isn't it like stew. borscht? Oh, is it? No. Well, God, that's well no, borscht is made myself. out of beets. No, goulash is like meat stew. Well, still. Have some. You need the platelets. Go get some goulash. Fine, you go eat too then. Alright, I will. But you have to go eat as well. Okay, I will go eat as well.